Hello and welcome to a new episode of Her Voice. In today's show, we will be debating how women entrepreneurs in the Arab region remain constrained in their entrepreneurial efforts by patriarchal traditions and how local laws often reflect and enforce certain cultural values that hamper female entrepreneurial aspiration. What obstacles face women to become entrepreneurs in the Middle East? And is there a market gap between them and their male counterparts? In a region that's predominantly male orientated, which ascribe to men having the role of a breadwinner and head of family, while the woman is predominantly seen as carer, wife and mother, how did successful women entrepreneurs overcome these perceptions? Who's the driver behind the success of a woman entrepreneur? These are a few of the questions that we will be asking our guests in today's show. But first, let's take a closer look at the present position of the Middle Eastern women in today's society. There's an old saying that a woman's work is never done, and yet, for too many women in the Arab world, in some respects, it never begins. Despite their multiple responsibilities as daughters, mothers, wives and caregivers to family members, old and young, women in the Middle East and North Africa have the world's lowest rates of labour force participation. However, there is a growing recognition of the role that women in business play in their country's economies. The Middle East and North Africa is no exception to this trend. Female entrepreneurship in the region has been increasing and becoming more visible over the last decade. Women-owned businesses are contributing to economic growth and wealth creation and creating employment opportunities for other women and men. Moreover, economically active women represent a potentially profitable market niche for the financial sector. Yet, despite the apparent benefits of increased levels of women's entrepreneurship in the region, women business owners report that they face a series of constraints when it comes to setting up or expanding a business. Some of the concerns raised are similar to those faced by men, but the lack of data on women entrepreneurs has hindered both understanding and systematic analysis of the constraints that women face in the business world. It is apparent that as the region continues to change and develop, a significant number of women are reaching positions of influence in business, politics, civil society, academia and the media with a growing number of entrepreneurs leading successful startups as some of these women are now becoming part of the exclusive and previously elusive lists in prestigious publications including Forbes International, Forbes Arabia and Arabian Business. The Arab world generally has low rates of female entrepreneurship in comparison to the rest of the world. Region-wide, women own 13% of firms, which is lower than most other regions, including Europe, Central Asia, East Asia and Latin America. One reason for low official rates of female entrepreneurship in the region is that a considerable amount of female entre entrepreneurship is conducted informally through home-based businesses, which are not captured by official statistics. To give us more of an insight into the world of entrepreneurs, I would like to welcome to the show Mrs. Zainab Al-Farhan Al-Imam, who is the owner and founder of the Women's Growth and Success Foundation, and Mrs. Sahar Khoury, interior design entrepreneur. Welcome to the show, ladies, and thank you so much for joining me. Um, Zainab, can you tell us more about WGSF and its purpose? Okay. Uh, Women's Growth and Success Foundation established 2010 in London. Uh, the main target for the foundation is to attract successful entrepreneur women from the world. So I've started my mission with the United Arab Emirates woman, feeling that she has done a lot and because I'm also belong. <laughs> Belonging to that region, <laughs> to that yes. Region. <laughs> <laughs> and um, we're doing very well with the number of uh, women that we have introduced to the UK. Excellent, fantastic. Um, Women entrepreneurs generally face a number of obstacles uh, which serve to depress female entrepreneurship um, rates. What are they and how to overcome them, obviously, with, with, with the foundation that you have? Okay, there are lots of obstacles facing women, but the main two obstacles are finance mm -hmm. and network. Right. So, uh, in regard of the network, she is so much limited 
-hmm. with the high-end networks. So for example, she doesn't have a business consultant. She doesn't have banker that help her to develop her business. Um, well, in general, her network is her friends. Ah, I see. <laughs> and, and it she starts from the, from the little sort of network of friends, which tends to spread. It's right, but I she needs to do more than that. Right. So what, what I do here is I introduce her to the government. I ah. introduce her to the mayor office, to London and partner, to help her to know how she can establish business globally. Ah. She's done very well locally. Yes. yes but it yes. is the time to be explored. Go global. But in, in a sense of finance, um, Dubai, for example, is a great um, example because there are lots of institutes for SME mm -hmm. where they provide finance for a woman to establish a business. Ah. And this is very, very important for her mm -hmm. to start her first step. I see. Yeah. I see. So you said network and then the other one was finance. The finance and yeah. therefore both of them are very important obviously to start up. Yeah. I see. Sahar. I mean, you have a passion for art because you're an interior designer, yes. entrepreneur. Um, how did it start? Tell us more about your business. Basically, it started when I've always been basically a career-minded person. I've always worked. But um, when I became a mom, so I want to be a mom <laughs> and I want to look after my child. Excellent. So um, at the same time, I wanted to work and I've been used to working um, from an early age. So I started something from home. I see. So it's kind of bonded together as a single element to the passion that I have for the art and the design. Yes. Um, but it's more of a business, let's say, and it's from home. So I could be a mother mm. and I can be a businesswoman at the same time. So it all started actually from home um, as a, you know, a small company and it started expanding within time. And, and we're talking about, you know, um, expanding the business. It's mainly social media which is very effective nowadays mm. because you've got Facebook, you've got um, WhatsApp, you've yeah. got Instagrams. Yeah. It's just we, people texting each other absolutely, and, absolutely. And, and spreading the word. So it's all a word of mouth and, and that's how it started off. Well, that's something, I mean, we're coming to definitely because we want to look closer at yeah. how to sort of, you know, network and how media, social media actually has actually helped quite a lot of women for the purpose very of building true. their businesses. Um, What's your view, Zainab, on the fact that um, funding is always an issue for many women um, that want to start up their own businesses? Mm -hmm. And not only, obviously, here in the UK, but we're talking about the Middle East. I mean, the Middle East, where can you go to find funding? Well, <laughs> the Middle East is not an issue for them in regard of funding because the government is supporting women highly. Mm. Middle East is a, a very new, new uh, country. Right and they are not as old age as European. Yeah, yeah. And consequently, what they've done till now is very much uh, well done, let's say, to them. Uh, having the first um, pioneer woman in, in, in business in, yes. in the Gulf, yes. and in the family business especially, this is a very big achievement. So really, finance, um, um, I don't think it's a big issue in there because of the support of the government. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is um, an article I actually read. Um, it says, um, it's in the, in the Guardian. It says, in Saudi Arabia, surveys and interviews with female entrepreneurs found that 82.2% of registered businesswomen rely on personal savings to fund their businesses and do not seek external funding. These female entrepreneurs also stated that they believe that many social and regulatory interactions are more challenging for them because of their gender. And as a result, they relied substantially on male relatives to complete business transactions. So does that mean that without the support of their male partners, friends, relatives, they wouldn't be successful? Well, I don't think so. No, it is it is the willingness to, to be successful, yes. and that's why she's successful. It's not because she's relating on her uh, family right. or because of the, the the husband. But we cannot forget that without the husband's support and the male people and yes. around you, you wouldn't have been done it very well. You right. always need that support. Even the man, he needs our support to, to have it done. So, <laughs> so it's okay to ask for their support. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, uh, no, uh, if, if, we, if we would like to take it seriously, I mean, uh, she's doing it in a right way. Right. But maybe because in Saudi Arabia, she don't talk about it. Right. They don't know her. Right. Uh, she keeps uh, keep the business uh, um, away from the media. I see. 
and not explore herself to the media. But in my last fashion show, which I've done in Westfield, 21st of March, I had uh, uh, two uh, female uh, Saudi Arabia designers and they came with their family and their husband and they were with lots of support. I mean, mm. this is something we have to talk about. The man is there for the woman mm. when she asks for it. Mm. He supports her. Yeah. It's the, well, sorry, I think it's yes. the new generation, isn't it? I see. If you want to think about the new generation, not the old generation, mm. they're all educated and, and, and they like this ambition. Mm. That's what mm. I think as yes. well. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so uh, time uh, is developing. Also, don't forget the media uh, in the in the Gulf is not with, doesn't support women that much. It's, she's it's not the media doesn't support women. It's that the woman is not used to uh, being like in the centre of attention, exposed. Yeah, yeah. yeah. To, exposed to the, yeah, yeah. Business, because to business they are role. all quite sort of you know very much yeah. to themselves, exactly. and they don't want to so, be. So yeah. that's why here WGSF come mm. to bring them out in a safe environment under the control of our organizations so they can explore themselves without any worries. Yeah. Okay. Well, one could be an entrepreneur in any field, in science, business, finance. The list is endless. Let's have a look at the top five women entrepreneurs in the Middle East according to the ArabianBusiness.com. Making it to the top doesn't always come easy and is often achieved after making mistakes and crossing long hurdles. Over the years, women have taken up roles in a wider variety of industries, in medicine as practicing surgeons, in engineering as well, and IT engineers working on offshore oil platforms, in banking and finance as business professionals leading multi-million dollar operations, all once very much male-dominated fields. Middle Eastern and North African countries have made some progress in reducing inequalities between men and women during the past decades especially in the areas of health and education, allowing the growth of women empowerment in the region. Let's have a look at the Middle East's top women entrepreneurs according to ArabianBusiness.com. Maha al Ghumahim is something of a celebrity in the Arab world of banking and finance. She founded Global Investment House, one of the largest investment companies in 1998, and when she took the firm public on the London Stock Exchange in 2008, it became the first Kuwaiti company to list there. Credited as the UAE's first female filmmaker, Naila al Khaja, film producer, has already made three short films in her brief career. One of her films won a prize at the Dubai International Festival in 2007. And the young Emirati has also set up her own production company, D7. al Khaja also heads up the UAE's first official film club, but her career choice and decision to tackle taboo subjects has often led her to controversy. Hayat Sindi is a medical researcher and since arriving to London in the early 1990s with no command of the English language and no promised place at university, Cindy's story has been an incredible one. She has been since credited with the invention of MARS which combines the effects of light and sound for use in biotechnology. Randa Ayubi, founder and CEO of Rubicon Holdings, survived on an initial investment of $140,000 for a decade before persuading friends and family to invest $3 million in her dream. The result was Rubicon Holdings, an Amman-based entertainment company which is now a global powerhouse with five international branches and more than 300 employees. And the top female entrepreneur in the Middle East is Sheikha Hessa bint Saad Abdullah Salem Al Sabah, President of the Council of Arab Businesswomen. Sheikha Hessa is a successful entrepreneur who has worked at the International Marine Petroleum Company and within Kuwait's Ministry of Defense's Department of Medical Services, Sheikha Hessa is now President of the Council of Arab Businesswomen. Um, Zainab. Being affluent and indulging, or battered, weak and oppressed, were the two categories that the Western media classified Arab women. And yet, just now, we saw the VT for the top women entrepreneurs in the Middle East. Mm -hmm. um, they don't look like nothing like oppressed to me. What's your opinion of this? Well, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I think um, locally we are really doing well. Okay. 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 Globally, we are unknown. Okay. Okay. And, and this is the problem. Mm -hmm. And the media or the statistic government uh, companies, when they put their point of view, they put, put it on what they see. see. And because there is no gate to the women in Saudi Arabia, for example, 
There, there are no, no institute for fashion show. Mm. There is no council for jewelry. Mm, mm, mm. So they cannot find them. However, mm. if they open the Instagram and the social media, a lot of them is That's there. true. They're all on Instagram now and social mm. media. And with yeah. the Instagram and the social media, you mm. tend to find that they are making massive, massive um, sort improvement. of well, improvement. Yeah. Definitely you don't need businesses. the social, you, to be honest with you, you don't need any institutes. It's just the social media. It's, it's just a, it, and it's the most yeah. effective advertisement, yes. the word of mouth. Yeah. I mean, from experience, that, this how, is how what I've noticed. How did that help you then? That's my next question. How did that help you with it your business? It helped me a Where lot. Where did you start from? Um, basically, as I said, I started from home. Um, working on small pieces and it was just a word of mouth so it starts from a small circle the direct friends the direct family and um, and they kind of tell other friends and they tell other members of families yes and it kind of expands and then as we talked about the social media or Instagram that we mentioned earlier um, you know one tells the other but in here you yeah. need to have a bigger a bigger network a network like business consultant like a brand consultant, like uh, people take your hand and move you forward faster because you're doing very well on your yeah. own. Mm. You yeah, know? some mm. people do need that. Yes. For me, um, I come from a business background as well as much as art and design. Thank God I didn't need it so far, but in the future, Zainab, <laughs> wait for my call <laughs> yeah, yes, yes. After, after this. <laughs> so yeah, inshallah. Yeah. Um, so, but usually you don't really need to because the world is so expand and plus it's becoming so small. Um, traveling, for example, I travel a lot, so I kind of launch my work and then when you launch your work to two, three candidates, for example, they tell other friends and then yes, so on, you know, a, the yes. circle gets bigger. Yes, we can see your pieces actually at the moment. They're absolutely gorgeous because obviously Thank as we're you. talking, they're being um, sort of um, um, displayed. displayed. Um, Sahar and obviously Zainab, this is a, a question I want to ask you because you're both women and you both are married and settled. Some men believe that women's place should be in the home. Hmm. <laughs> Taking care of the kids and sort of, you know, not being, you know, being responsible yeah. for anything. What's your views about this? Hmm. Although there are a lot of women just like yourself who can actually run the business and take care of the the business. What do you think, Zainab? Yeah. Well, <laughs> it has a lot to do with the, with the sports background. Uh, if he's from an uh, educated family, if his mother, uh, she's a working mother, or she, then he will, he will accept it. Yes. Whereas if he has never seen that uh, scenario, yes. then it's really hard for him to accept his wife to be a successful businesswoman. <laughs> <laughs> That's right, yes. <laughs> maybe, I think maybe this is one of the issues. Yes. However, nowadays, uh, everybody is well educated. We are yeah. beyond that yeah, yeah. stage. Yeah, beyond that stage. Yeah, yeah. I think men are that. exposed to the Western world a lot. So they're kind of um, adapting the good side of some are very proud of their women to be working, career-minded, a business women some I wouldn't say that they're actually especially the new generation yes. I wouldn't say that you know sit at home and 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 cook and look after the yes. kids I think they're all trying to push their wives to make something out of themselves because yes. they're the women that are raising up the new generation and you yes. want a strong-minded mom That's true. That's exposed true. mom yes. that knows what's going on around the world especially <laughs> when we were teenage life so Mm. It depends. It depends, really. It's a kind of a, it's a strong debate. But I think the new generation, for definite, they they would they would um, push their wives to to work as much as being um, housewives. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's a it's a lot of um, load for the woman. Yes. You know, yes. some some women, you know, working women would say, do you know what? I'd rather be the old fashioned. 50s wives staying at home looking uh, after true. the kids. Some of them would actually yes, like to prefer that than actually be sort yeah, of anything to do yeah. with business so, or set up anything. So it's anywhere. kind of, as I said, it is a yeah. challenge, it is um, a big debate. So yeah. it depends on the candidate themselves. Well, do you think that, generally speaking, among the world of entrepreneurship, that women entrepreneurs are actually a threat to the male species? They could be. What do you think, Zainab? <laughs> I think they could be. You're an entrepreneur. Let's ask you that question. That's all you. Yeah. No, what I do don't. You think? I don't think so. Why you should we? We, no, we no, shouldn't no. be a threat to no, the male well, species. I mean, because we are successful. Then uh, <laughs> we are thinking. No, I don't think so. No. Yes, beautiful, <laughs> successful. You know, independent, <laughs> financially. So. Um, 
<laughs> it, as I've said, it depends which angle do you actually look at it from. So yeah. at this stage, there are men that think they are a threat because you'd like to be in the power. Other men know they'd feel that, you know, in yeah. fact, we're proud of it. So it depends really which angle you want to look at it from. Yes. Well, please stay with us because um, we will take a break. And then afterwards, we will be speaking to a woman entrepreneur who's actually got her own taxi business. So please stay with us, okay? <laughs> Setting up and running your own taxi firm isn't a science, but it's by no means simple, especially when run by a business-minded female that knew that setting up a company in this sector can steer her way to a very tidy profit. But would setting up a taxi business mean driving the taxi yourself and building an empire of taxis? Let's ask our guest, Russia, who's joining us now on the phone. Welcome to the show, Russia, and thank you so much for coming. Hi, hi. Hello. Um, hi, hello. Russia, how did you start this big venture, and did you have to start off as a taxi driver yourself? Uh, I, no, before I wasn't. I mean, you mean, um, uh, I, I just uh, think about this, and uh, I found it very interesting. So I bought a car, and I done my uh, business card, and you know, the uh, procedure, and I've done it, you know. Wow. Excellent. Okay. Why, why the sort of business, um, Russia? Is, was there a niche in the market? Did you feel that there was a need for more taxi drivers or taxi business or taxis <laughs> on the roads of London? Uh, not really, but uh, there was some idea from my friends, and I thought it was very interesting, and I go ahead. I like something like it, you know, it's uh, abnormal. So that's why I go ahead. I found it very interesting. Fantastic. Zainab, um, Russia is a woman that's entered into a business that's sort of male domineering, and especially here in the UK. Um, how would you actually sort of, you know, um, describe that type of business? And would you sort of, would, would you sort of consider starting a business like this in the Middle East, for example? <laughs> <laughs> and she's doing very well. We're proud that a woman doing that, yeah. uh, controlling that number of, uh, of employee, uh, especially hard work. Um, uh, and she's so much into 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 her employee because it's a, a, a taxis. Yes, absolutely. There's <laughs> so, taxis. You know, so so it's, it's not you know, paperwork. Not it's, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so no, she's doing very well. And yes, why not? Why not taking that to the to the to the Arab countries and yeah. to explore? Yeah. Why not? Yeah. yeah. I mean, Russia. Did, did you find any obstacles or challenges when entering this competitive business? Yes, sure, definitely. Yes, it's competitive between Anel and companies and yeah and I'm, I'm happy to done what I'm done right now and yeah I found it fantastic fantastic yeah. um, okay. do, do you think yeah. Sahar do you think that success has any influence on your relationship with friends and family I mean I know Russia obviously running a business like a, a taxi business yeah. wouldn't that sort of cause friction in the male sort of you know environment so obviously with your business it's a it's a woman's sort of time to be sort of yeah. environment because the woman is the one that sort of looks after her interior design etc etc it, yeah what, what how does that I mean to be honest because I deal with different kind of fields as you said um, I've got the advertisement I've got the marketing what have you no I don't think so because as I said we actually live in a world that it's more exposed um, what you're talking about, I think it was like centuries ago or let's yes. say just a couple of years ago. <laughs> but now it's just it's so exposed. I don't think there's a difference between a man and a woman. And it's nice to compete. Yes. Um, there are certain fields that are men good at things, yeah. you know, better than women. And there are other fields that women are better than, than men. But it's, it's all about sharing the information. And, yeah. and the challenge is nice because you're just you're learning from each other. That's true. So. I mean, Russia, what, what do people say when, you, when, when, you actually, when they actually um, ask you what you do and you say you're a uh, taxi business owner or entrepreneur? Uh, so, so, some people, they are, you know, uh, happy or they, some people, they are shocked. Some people, <laughs> they, yes. Uh, uh, but I noticed um, the man is more encouraged me to do this and oh. they pay me more than the women. Wow. Oh, and fantastic. they said, yeah, because you are a lady and work like a hard worker and carrying some stuff and luggage and this is, you know, so I found it, yeah, <laughs> it's a different opinion from the different people, That's you know. True. 
That's true. Yeah. And um, yeah. It's, 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 so you have, your, your husband is quite supportive then, I'm imagining, um, with your business and, and um, you know, he doesn't want you back in the house sort of cooking after you finish work. <laughs> Actually, I'm, I'm not married, so that's why. This oh, is that's even the, better then. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Join the it. club. I, I have my friends, but also, I, yeah, nobody tells me when did you come back, where are you, where are you going, you are late, you know, this blah, 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 blah. I don't have it, so I'm cool. Yeah. Yes. Okay, fantastic. Well, Rasha, thank you so much for joining us today, and we really do wish you more success in the future. Thank you so much. Thank you. More thank than you. welcome. Thank, thank you. you so much. Bye. Um, um, Zainab, how, do you, how does um, WGSF um, help support women who okay. want to start up a business and want to do, you know, to start up from scratch, basically? Uh, as a matter of fact, when I was listening to her conversation, where is the media? Why don't they bring her up mm. and show her business? Yes, that's true, actually. But and sorry, it's, it's not the media coming to you. This is, this is the fact of the business that you have to go and chase the media. You have yeah. to go and chase the customer. You have to chase... So, well, this is then the question to Dina. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. Yes. That's why we have you here today. <laughs> That's yeah. true, yes. Um, your foundation does encourage the women participation in different industries. Um, how do you do that and in what type of events? Okay, um, the, the way I do it is in a very uh, different way than the others. I do forums. I do fashion show, jewelry show, fine art auction, but I do it under the roof of creativity of art. So I give my guests the happiness to come and join us. So they enjoy the moment that they are with me. Yes. Uh, this hour, which they will be joining us for the fashion show, they will enjoy the show, and then we talk about the business, how to do it. Otherwise, it will be so boring. That's why you see that uh, in uh, the last fashion show, I've done it the whole day from nine to nine, and uh, the, the guests, number of guests were around 100,000. So, okay, we've done the first um, achievement, let's do the second one, and then the second day, I took my guests, and I went to Harris, introduced them to the buyers, I took them to uh, a trip to London and Partner, which is part of Mayor of London office, to introduce the idea of establishing business in the, in the UK, and the last thing, which is the finale, we gave them an award with the present of um, the ambassador's poses. So we were having Dalal Lahmidi from Kuwait, uh, embassy, which is the ambassador's wife, um, Salwa Qazwini, Palestinian ambassador's wife, uh, uh, Maryam um, Al Khatir. Qatari ambas uh, ambassador's wife, and Fantastic. then we were having uh, a staff from the United Arab Emirates. Uh, all this uh, support from the government as well as from the husband, because all of them were having their family with them. And we complete the circle by introducing them to the right network. Okay. Yeah. Excellent. So you're talking about the mayor of London being obviously yeah. taking part in, in events. Um, what's his view about Arab women entrepreneurs, um, and especially now with, with all the media and the coverage and how they're actually sort of showing up the women being you know, quite oppressed yeah, in course, the Middle East. Of course. What, what, he, doesn't that change his, his views? I mean, he, he, he already uh, has his own view, which is good view. Yeah. Good, good. <laughs> so we didn't have an issue with Because, I mean, the UK is it's just a multicultural country anyway. And, and so they kind of have a background of us. Especially London. It yes. Is, it is the, our area for, I mean, we have huge investment in here. Yeah, from all the Middle true. East, yes, uh, yes. Uh, the tourists, I mean, yes. it is near to our country, not far away, so it is the right place to start and expose those women to, to, yeah. to the global market. Um, well, uh, the mayor was uh, more than happy to meet those ladies and uh, he, he really enjoyed uh, being introduced to them and I'm, vice versa, I'm, of I'm course. I'm glad to hear that, of yes. course, yeah, I'm glad to hear that. Um, actually, from Cairo, I have on Skype Mr. Farid Muharram. He's the chairman at Muharram Company. Welcome to the show, Mr. Farid, and thank you for joining us. Thank you, and uh, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you. Um, as a leading entrepreneur in Egypt, do you have female competi uh, competition in your industry? Uh, I never really looked at it as female competition in the industry. Uh, I, I work with uh, uh, females, if you want to call them, uh, colleagues, bosses, uh, subordinates, but uh, I wouldn't call them competitors. Right. 
Okay, but do you feel threatened by successful women entrepreneurs by any means or any way? Um, say not only way, you know, obviously in your company, but say generally speaking. Not really, no. No, no, not really. Can you tell us more about um, how uh, a, a male like yourself, obviously, um, sort of uh, view successful women entrepreneurs? Some uh, males, uh, and I, I don't want to generalize, and I don't want to uh, talk about the Middle East uh, all uh, as a one bulk. Yes. Uh, I'll talk yes. specifically about uh, uh, Egypt and the, the people that I've uh, interacted with. Mm -hmm. uh, some some males in, in business uh, do f uh, th uh, feel threatened, but they are threatened because of lack of confidence in their ability, and they will be threatened by male or females. Mm -hmm. It's not just uh, uh, females. Uh, on the other hand, uh, females uh, uh, in business are very eager to prove themselves, uh, uh, whereas males probably are not that eager because they probably uh, are perceived to have an edge by just being a male. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Right. Um, Sahar, I mean, obviously talking about competition, do you have any male competition within your interior design industry? To be honest with you, as, as, um, as we said earlier, I don't think it's the competition specifically between the male and the female um, because everybody's so educated nowadays, everybody's so exposed to the world nowadays. Um, it's not just my generation. If you look at our parents' generations, um, most women also worked. Um, but yes, it is a competitive field as itself mm -hmm. because there are different aspects that you have to look at and there are different fields. I mean, you know, at some stages I'd have to deal with the builders and yes. or the painters and what have you. So it's not really as much as competitive mm. as we're talking about the male because... Um, as I said, it's, yeah. just, it's just an open world yes. now. No, you're right, you're right. Um, Mr. Farid, what obstacles would um, a woman entrepreneur face that her male counterpart wouldn't, should they be working in the same industry in your view? Uh, well, generally, uh, still in, uh, in, uh, in Egypt, uh, women are not uh, treated equally, uh, like most of the Middle East. Uh, and therefore, there is a, a, an eagerness uh, for a woman to prove herself, uh, for instance, in a board meeting. If she's the chairman, uh, she will probably be more assertive than uh, she needs to be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, and that because uh, she's used to being uh, looked uh, down at. Mm -hmm. So she needs to prove herself by being more assertive and more firm than uh, normal. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, how do women entrepreneurs compare to the rest uh, of the world? Uh, women entrepreneurs in Egypt, do they compare to the rest of the world? I think they do compare uh, well and they uh, probably in some... Uh, I don't think in the rest of the world, if you talk about Europe and the States, uh, I don't think women need to uh, prove themselves as much as uh, women in the Middle East need to. Mm -hmm. So there is a, a more uh, women in the Middle East will be more sharp, more focused because of being women as mm -hmm. such. Mm -hmm. Zainab, uh, a question to you. Um, many challenges um, face women, um, mainly male prejudice, stereotyping and preconceptions. What must women do in the Middle East to overcome them? To overcome which which obstacle? The uh, and the male prejudice, you know, because they're prejudiced against because they're female, <coughs> and um, you know, sort of stereotyping. Oh, you know, you're a woman, you can't do this, you know. So say, you know, if she's she says she's a scientist entrepreneur, or you know, I don't sort think of. Th there is such a thing nowadays. I'm, I'm trying to find one. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. <laughs> I, I don't think, uh, I think we are beyond that step. Mm -hmm. I, I think, I mean, at least what, what I do is I'm uh, attracting the successful entrepreneurs. So I really not so much into the one that couldn't make it. Mm -hmm. Because if she couldn't make it, then she wouldn't be with the, with the group. Yeah. They would, yeah. She would be a bit behind. Mm -hmm. However, if she would like to do it, then it's so simple. Mm -hmm. The willingness mm -hmm. will make her succeed. She can find a way. If she doesn't need to go straight, she can yeah. find a way to yeah. do things. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> to be honest with Absolutely. you, I mean... Uh, yes, sorry, Sahar. I was just going to say, um, 
if you look at any company anywhere globally and each team that we're talking about teams there is international candidates in the team anyway so you know you're going to find the arabs and then you're going to find the europeans and you're going to find the asians and what have you so i don't think people are that much restricted mm. to that kind of mentality mm. it's mm. all i think personally the challenge is how capable you are it's not about a male or a female yes. it's about how good are you and I want to compete with you. It's either a male or a female. Yeah. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. Yeah. What do you think, Mr. Um, Farid? How, what do you think about the, um, the ladies' views? Well, I, I think there is still... Uh, uh, we still haven't crossed the, the border of uh, uh, equality between ma men and women in, in, in Egypt. Mm -hmm. uh, if you talk about uh, the upper uh, echelon of... Uh, uh, business uh, men and women, uh, I think they are closer to to, to being uh, treated uh, on an equal footage. But uh, if you go to to the local populace, I think it's a different story altogether. Mm -hmm. So if we're just going to restrict our conversation to uh, uh, men and women, uh, uh, businessmen and women, uh, yeah, there is a they are getting close. Uh, but in terms of capability and uh, ability to achieve. I think uh, right now uh, women have an edge mm, mm. Uh, because they are more alert That's to the true. fact that they are, be, they are women, you know. That's true. So uh, you would find that the, there are sort of shining stars. <laughs> That's nicely put, <laughs> said. Um, this is obviously a, a question for my guests, Mr. Farid, Sahar and uh, Zainab. Um, what are women and men different in networking? I mean, networking as in, you know, sort of finding ways in, in making that social business no, relationship. So. Are they, you know, no, different? What do you think, Zainab? I no, don't they think are. so. No, no, no. <laughs> really? Networking, it's, uh, the, the, the professional networking is for men. Mm. Woman is not allowed to, to put her feet in there and they underestimate her. And this is the problem we are facing, the network. Uh, so there, that means there's, we're still being, there is oppression, you know, yes. there is there, you know. But so there, are, there are certain companies or certain places that you'd go to, in fact, um, I think, no, they, they kind of welcome you in, they'd like to see what you're up to, and you do kind of socialize. I don't think there is a limit at all. I personally think it's, it, it all depends on the um, candidate themselves. Mm. How daring are you? I see. How far do you want to go with this? Yes. Um, and, and it all comes back basically from work experience, education, to have that confidence to, to fit mm. in. Mm. So. What do you think, Mr. Farid? Well, I, as I said, I think women uh, are better at networking than men. Uh, <laughs> there you go. Uh, <laughs> why? <laughs> why, Mr. Farid? Sorry? Why, why do you think that? <laughs> uh, that's, that's an observation. It's not an I assumption. Mean, let's talk about, for example, the the you know the the social media of networking. It's it's all the same, and even going to face to face to to launch something, isn't it the same? Why do you think it's different? No, it's not different, but I think uh, uh, women have a, a, a natural uh, uh, talent for doing networking. Okay. <laughs> now, I don't think that uh, you can take it as being... So like can I just interrupt you? So what about salesmen then? It's all about talking as well. It's all about the character. Yeah. yeah. Uh, I used to work for uh, Xerox for 23 years. And the most successful uh, sales uh, people are the women in the sales force. I wonder why. So, I wonder why. <laughs> uh, now they, they because I think they need to they want to prove themselves. Uh, you can also say because their women customers are, are more likely to warm up to them. That could be part of the reason. However, you're not going to pay for something that's worth a uh, hundred thousand uh, dollars just because the the salesperson looks nice. Well, actually, yeah. we're not talking about the saleswoman. We're talking about the entrepreneur woman, mm. which is a totally different than the saleswoman. Mm. Uh, entrepreneur woman, uh, she needs to be uh, introduced to the right network. Mm. Mm. She needs to know, for example, uh, entrepreneur businesswoman from the Gulf, she needs to know how to buy a flat in uh, London. Yes. And in an easy way, because there are options of mortgage. Mm. Now, she doesn't know all that. Why? Because the man is taking the lead. 
Right. And when they invite a woman, usually her husband go or her brother go because she's, uh, she's not been introduced by her name. Mm. And this is the problem, is the men are more <laughs> into the, the right network than her. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you. That's a, that's a fantastic discussion there, but I'm afraid we are running out of time. Um, Mr. Farid Muharram, Chairman at Muharram Company, thank you very much for joining us today, and sorry to have to kept you waiting. No, at all. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good day. Thank you. Bye. Um, Sahar, what's your future plans? Will you ever sort of c consider sort of going internationally? <laughs> of course, I, I actually, um, sorry, I already uh, sell my work internationally, but taking the That's interior it. design itself, yes, I'm planning to go international. Excellent. But the small ornaments that, you know, rescuing a furniture and, and redesigning ornaments and, and hand painting, what have you, it's already international, but I am planning to take the interior design global. Fantastic. Yes. Um, Zainab, how could women approach your foundation and what support or advice uh, would you consider sort of offering them um, entering, when entering the world of entrepreneurship? Okay, they can approach my foundation through WGSF-London. This is my website. And uh, if they would like to do business, yeah. They, yeah. all that they have to do is to work hard, yes. 100%. Fantastic. Yeah. Well, unfortunately, this topic can go on forever because <laughs> yes. it is a fantastic topic. <laughs> very and, interesting. Um, it's a very interesting one too. But unfortunately, we have reached the end of the show. Um, this topic is actually very interesting and inspiring. But like I said, you know, we, we will probably have another show, maybe sort of have you again in the show and uh, sort of talk more about it. But really, thank you very much, Mrs. Zainab Al-Farhan Al-Imam. Uh, founder of Women's Growth and Success Foundation for joining us today in the show and thanks also to Mrs. Sahar Khudairi, um, interior design entrepreneur from London who also inspired us with her story for, um, to success. Thanks also to Russia, leading taxi business entrepreneur in London and Mr. Farid Muharram, chairman of Muharram Company. Entrepreneurial behavior is often driven by diverse reasons including the desire for personal accomplishment. Despite its importance, the monetary incentive is not always the prime motivator for entrepreneurs. A woman's decision to establish her own business usually originates from wanting to be financially independent and stable. My motto, if you have a dream, go make it come true. Take care and goodbye.